Hello and welcome back to our animation blueprint tutorial series. In the previous episode we looked at blend spaces and now we're going to look at an offshoot of blend spaces and look at aim offsets. This is how you make a character like aim around and look around based upon which direction you're moving the controller. So let's take a look at how we create this new additive type of animation. Okay, so next up in our animation blueprint, we're going to work on adding an aim offset to our character. So aim offsets essentially allow you to move part of the body separately and independently from the other parts of the body. And the way it does that is through what we call additive animations. And so when I look up, it's going to aim the like his head and gun up. And when I'm going down, he'll aim his gun down, left, right, and, and so on. And additive animations basically means you're adding on information about the animation on top of whatever animation is currently playing so if you've got a character with an animation pack you're looking for an aim offset now they could be done in a couple of ways one is like this this is a, ideally the best way because these are already separated out for you and you can see here there's idle ao ao means aim offset and cc center center so this one is him just looking straight ahead and this is all they are. They're just animations that are literally just one frame long to suppose that you want. And each one of these on the asset details, you want to go down and make sure they have additive settings set to mesh space. And they're using the base pose type of selected animation frame and using the idle pose. This is so it can work out the changes of animation. So this was pretty simple. This one's just looking straight forward. So is the idle. So there's no change going on here. But if I was going to center down, this one's still saying center, center, like straight forward. We're now measuring it downward. So any movement going down, any changes this has have compared to this one is what it's going to apply. And that's how additive animation works. So you just need all your animation offsets for every single pose. So I've got center down, center up, I've got left back center, left back down, left back up, left center down and so on and so forth okay and also provided to hear some non-combat ones so you're just standing still and you're looking around not aiming your gun so now this pack does come with its aim offsets already made but we're going to make one from scratch so you can see how these work so let's go ahead and create our aim offset i'm going to go back over here and go to aim offset in animation menu you choose your skeleton and we'll do revenant aim or ao aim offset and open this up now we've done blend spaces the last time and this works basically exactly the same as a blend space we have this graph that's two-dimensional and we can apply those at different animation poses onto this graph you just need to make sure you set the graph up first. So let's go to the horizontal axis and vertical axis on the axis settings. Horizontal one, we're going to name is your, and that's going to go from minus 90 to 90. And we'll turn snap to grid, again, to make my life a little bit easier. And the vertical axis is going to be pitch. So pitch is up and down, your is left and right, and rolling is like you're turning, like you're rolling your head to the left, rolling your head to the right. So your and pitch are the ones we want to use here. And pitch again will go between minus 90 and 90. And turn on snap to grid. That will do for our axes. So our next thing we've got to do is we need to just plug in our different poses. Uh, let me try and get this so you can see what we're doing here. Okay, so we go to idle AO. So I'm going to put in my center center usually first. I'll put that in the center here. And as soon as you add this, you may get some weird artifacting. And that is because over here, it's also assigned this animation to be its own preview base, which you don't want. You want the just idle pose to be the normal one. So go to idle, and that will now be set to be the base pose for this. So that's the center, center, center. center. We're going to do center down. Just bring that down there. Why does it keep changing this? We'll change it in a minute. Center down, center up. And if I change this back to idle, we should see those changes happening. There we go. So if I move it up, it aims up and we get this nice blend between the different animation poses. Okay. 
Uh, next we've got left. I'm not going to worry about the back ones. Let's just do left center. Right there. I don't know why it keeps resetting this. It's quite annoying. Let's uh, we'll place them all in there and fix it. So left center, left down, left up. Um, right center, right down, right up. And let's just fix that setting. Back to idle. There we go. So now my cat can aim in that entire space. Which is quite nice. So I'm going to hit save and go to our animation blueprint. And we can add an aim offset to our animation graph by going into like usually here. Because you need to feed it, because it's additive, it needs to be fed a animation to add on to. So we go drag out our, our um, revenant AO. Oh, that's quite wrong. Um, it is okay, it's a band. It'll be this one. And here we've got your and pitch coming through on here, much like how the blend space works. It works exactly the same as that. But being additive, you can see it receiving a base pose. So you plug the pose into the base pose, and then you plug in the output into the output. So it goes in, adds the value onto it, and then puts it back out. So at the moment, nothing's going to look anything different. That's because our yawn pitch is set to zero. So these need to be variable. So I'm going to right-click on these and promote them to variable. Like that. So let's now go back to our event graph, um, which is there. And now I need to calculate my yawn pitch. Now I tend to do this in its own little function, just make things a little bit tidier. So I'm going here and do calculate your pitch. And what you got to do is basically you need to work out the difference between where you're aiming with the camera, which way they're facing. And then we call that the delta. So you have to get those two rotations and get the delta of those rotations. So let's do try get pawn owner. And there we want to get control rotation which is the way we are looking with the camera and we also want to get the actor rotation and you want to get a difference between the two so from control we're going to do delta delta just means difference so it'll work out the difference of rotation between those two and then we're going to do an r interp 2 now we're using r interp 2 to smoothly transition the values across that way it doesn't look all stuttery. It'll come across a bit smoother. And we're going to put the delta into the target there. Delta time, we're going to drag out and do delta world seconds. And into that speed, I like to put three. And then I can adjust it as I want later on. High or low if I need to. So on the current, you have to put in the current value you've calculated. So you can do is drag out this and do make rotator. And you're going to plug in your pitch and plug in your yaw. So we're calculating what these values are, making it into current rotator, getting what our new rotation should be, and working out what it's heading towards with this. And so now I just need to output this into the pitch and yaw variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this to get my different rotations out. And on the pitch, we're going to do clamp float, uh, do clamp angle. I'm going to go between minus 90 and 90 because that's how far we set the aim offset. So need two of those, one for your pitch, one for your. And we'll set that to your there. And set that to pitch there. And we just hook those up. And where's my purple node? There it is. And we'll plug that in. Okay, so now if I go back to my event graph, I can just chuck this on to the end to calculate my yaw and pitch. So let's take a look at that in game. So as I aim down, you can see his character model is aiming down now. I aim up, he aims up. Now left and right is a bit difficult because at the moment he's turning with us, uh, which we don't really want to do because he looks like he's spinning on a circle. 
So what we're going to do is go to his character blueprint. Um, is that the right one? Nope. And let's go to. Uh, I'll have to put it in here. Log into player. Okay. So, yeah, on here, I'm just going to go to my uh, character movement settings, go down to rotation, and I'm going to turn use controller desired rotation off. So that way he won't turn when I'm turning. Um, and hit compile on that one for now. And you can see now. If I turn to the left, he's going to aim to the left and to the right. Down, up. You get this nice sort of movement going into it. And that's the aim offset. So I mentioned before that there are two ways you can normally get aim offsets, uh, like the poses. One is if they're really separated out for you, it makes life really easy. If they're not separated out for you and they're all bunched together into one animation, which sometimes happens. Um, I don't know if this one has it. Let's have a look. Um, I don't think they do. No, it's just getting back the other ones. So if they're all bunched together, uh, let's say, for example, this is like playing all of them all together. So the character's going up and down, left, right, it's doing all the different poses in one. You can export each one. You just go to the frame you want to export and do create asset, create animation from current pose, and you save out each pose as their individual animations. And there you can plug it into the aim offset like normal. Okay? And that's how you do that. So there you go. We've now got our aim offset working. We can see that working with animations. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to go through the process of creating montages and looking at layered blending. And look at how we blend different layers of animations together using their bones. So you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you.